All right, everybody, welcome back for the uh, last part of our uh, conditioning lesson. And uh, again, we're on uh, learning, and uh, we've done classical conditioning, operant conditioning. Now, this is the third type of learning. Uh, it's called cognitive learning, and you can see what we're going to get into here today. More to the point, it's, it's called social cognitive learning. Tony Hawk, a famous uh, skateboard artist, learned how to skateboard through observation and imitation, which involved unobservable mental processes. Uh, Edward Tolman, back in the 1930s, devised an experiment using rats to explore hidden mental processes. He, he discovered the rats uh, soon learned how to uh, negotiate to take the shortest route to get to the uh, food reward. It was his surmise that routes had developed a cognitive map or mental representation of the maze. And uh, just Remember that. His work laid the, the foundation for further studies with human cognitive learning. So that was Tolman. Uh, Bandora, Albert Bandora, uh, is the big name here for social cognitive learning. Uh, those of you that are going on into the helping professions, uh, you know, you'll, you'll hear Bandora's name a lot. But uh, he found that humans learn while observing. And that much, if not most, of human learning takes place during observation. So, so the magic word for social cognitive learning is just observation. Observational learn. The magic word for classical conditioning is what? Reflex. Yeah. And the magic word for operant conditioning is what? That's behavior. Yeah. So the magic word for social cognitive learning is observation, observation. Yeah, Albert Bandura led cutting-edge research in so social cognitive learning uh, that is a result of watching, imitating, and modeling the behaviors of others. So, in other words, people learn by observing and watching. Uh, you think about like pro sports like football, uh, why they do like film intense film study during the week. They don't even, I mean, they do a lot of practice and the practice that you look at on a practice field that that's all that's all operant conditioning uh, with the with with the reward of winning the games on Sunday but uh, in, in terms of their preparation uh, they're doing a lot of film study work during the week that's observational learning learning by by observing uh, little children they you you see them uh, with with their toys or their dolls, and they're they're treating their dolls like their dolls are little children, and they've learned that from you. They've learned to parent from you. Uh, when they go off to school, uh, the teachers try to teach them things using the blackboard, uh, just demonstrating things. They're using observational learning. You know, probably the most learning that you've you've learned, and um, you know, people around you is is just other watching other people, whether it's in person or whether it's on television or videos or whatever. But that that's how you learn things. You know, by watching, imitating, and modeling the behavior of others. So there's not even any conditioning going on. It's just watching. And uh, there was uh, Bandura's Bobo doll experiment that uh, showed about violence, that uh, uh, they, they used a, a inflatable clown doll, and uh, there were children in there, and a doll came in and just uh, beat the clown doll up and flopped them around, and then he left. And, and then uh, children uh, were put into a room, and they imitated him. Uh, with the clown doll and even using other things uh, in, in threatening ways. So, but they, they had learned uh, violent behavior just by uh, observing, which goes back to the video game aspect too. Okay, uh, Bandora's social cognitive learning. In this photo, a non-frightened person, the model, was holding a spider while the observer 
is obviously showing fear. So th this is going to be explaining uh, the uh, four processes that Bandora came up with for social cognitive learning. Uh, number one, attention. First, the observer must pay attention to the model. In this photo, a non-frightened person the model is holding a spider while the observer is obviously showing fear. Memory, the next step for the observer uh, is to commit the information to their memory and uh, imitation. Then the observer must imitate the behavior of the model. And finally, motivation. It, it's important to remember that the observer needs to have a reason or motivation to mimic the behavior being modeled. There must be some reward to be gained. Okay, so th those are kind of the steps for that. Uh, you can use this with animals uh, in the example here. You could you could do this with uh, uh, you you could do this with um, uh, operant conditioning. But uh, insight learning is a mental process marked by a sudden and unexpected solution to a problem. It's sometimes called the aha moment. And uh, so when you're doing observational learning and you're you're kind of going through some steps that you've observed and you know you're trying to remember them because you're motivated to get them and all of a sudden you go oh I know what I'm doing I know how to do this there there's your aha moment 